ASO or App Store optimization is one of those things that everyone knows that they need to do or need to know a little bit about or a lot of bit about, but not enough to know what to do. You've probably heard that you need to optimize some keywords. What does that mean? Mm. Or you need to change your need to change your description, you need to change your other things, your metadata, but what does it all mean? So to demystify that, as our title says, we brought in Peter, an ASO expert, an actual consultant. He does this for a living and knows everything there is to know about ASO. Almost, just so we don't get, nah, he knows more than you think. Yeah, yeah, perfect timing. My name is Ariel. I'm the co-founder and CEO of App Figures, and I've been looking at data for the last almost 10 years. And today we're going to be talking um, about what is App Store, App Store optimization, why we even need it, give you some tips and tricks, and talk about strategies, winning strategies for App Store optimization. And then we'll open it up for questions. Cool. How does that sound? Yeah, man. It's Let's not like we it. planned it or anything. No, yeah. no. I mean, we have some structure here to you know keep us on track because uh, we like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> we had a we had a meeting and we we went on for like I think an hour and a half and we were just like bop, 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 yeah, bop, bop, that was an hour and a half over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's good. So do you want to do you want to open it up and, and like uh, maybe sure I'll, I'll open it up. Yeah. And uh, when it comes to App Store optimization, I think one of the biggest kind of mysteries is what does it mean? What does it entail? Some people say it's related to keywords, and if you stick some keywords in some places, everything will be better. Um, some people. Yeah, I know. I, I feel this way too. It's it's not that's not ASO. Um, and some people think that it's all about the the marketing aspect, and that kind of evolves more around what is SEO from the web. If you came from there, and uh, and I think a good way to think about it is a framework that you actually introduced right. when we first started talking about this. That I, I would love for you to introduce to everyone. That kind of looks at the entire um, journey. I would say from before someone is your user to after after they are your user. Right. So. If you look over here, we basically have a simple, simple uh, concept here for how to get people to see your app. You want to rank. You want to get people to. You want to get eyeballs to to your app store page. That's uh, the first step. The second thing has to do with conversion. How do we ensure the highest conversion rates, meaning downloads? And the last thing, which is kind of falling in a weird way outside. The ASO, you know, discipline uh, is engagement, but it truly ties into, you know, having successful ASO um, because um, we now know that the stores, you know, Google Play is actually using engagement from the app to rank, uh, you, you know, to give you your ranking. Right. So they started rolling out um, in the beginning. They did it for game. Pierre probably knows a lot about that. You know, the first thing they did was they said, um, "Let's let's do it for games. If people are not you, you know, playing these games, why should we even rank this app?" And later they started rolling it out for the rest of us, if you will, for all the utility apps and, and other types of apps. So this is a general framework, and we use this to you know kind of make clients understand that there's a there's a process to this. This is not. I wouldn't call it. It is rocket science, but it's not complete rocket science. You know, so focus on getting you know high rankings in app stores. Focus on converting better, and then you know do your magic, build great apps so that you get a, you know higher engagement. That's a, that's a success. You know, app success and doing this is um, it's definitely not easy. So, but um, yeah, this is this is a framework. So this is a good way to. You know, if you go home with one thing, rank, convert, engage. We should have done success equals rank, convert, right, engage. <laughs> yeah, we're done. Food, everything's okay. happy. Cool. So, and we're going to talk about all all these things. But before we even talk about them, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about what you do as a consultant? Yeah, I mean, before? We, talk about we, optimizers. Yeah, yeah. I guess we, you know, to kind of introduce um, the company. We started five years ago. We saw there was a need for ASO. Um, we, I don't know exactly how it happened, but I think we were basically searching the app stores. And we were like, "This is this is difficult to find apps." And uh, my partner and I, um, the company was uh, was started in Denmark. I've been based here for 13 years, but um, together we came up with a business plan. We're like, "Okay, there's there's a niche for uh, ensuring that people actually, you know, all these apps that are being produced are found." And so. We started kind of building um, somewhat of methodology. I mean, this is kind of like 
the framework, right? It's like, how do we do this? And we build everything from, from, from the bottom up and we're lucky enough to work a lot with people that actually had you know, apps that were sim successful or I would say that had apps that were with users coming in, you know, people were actually searching for them. So we work with typically 80% corporate, 20% startups. And uh, most of the startup fail. I mean, that's just the nature of the game, right? The corporate people, they have so much money that they have a you know, long trajectory. They typically fail in a sense that they're not really doing very well. But I think there's, there's a change happening now and, and um, people or I would say the people that are dropping this kind of money are starting to realize that um, that there need to be consequences when, when shit fails. <laughs> so, so there's a little change happening right now, but uh, and basically we kind of came in five years ago when there was no, um, you know, no lack of money being invested in apps. So we've kind of been riding out this uh, nice wave of, uh, you know, hedge fund money uh, or people getting, building, you know, stupid apps that, uh, you know, didn't really do much for the world, right? So, um, but... <laughs> So someone else paid for all of his experience. Yes, exactly. No, but 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 it's it's it's. Uh, I I don't like to be negative in in this space because I know you guys all have like grand you know aspirations. But I, I like to put on my dark hat and be like, you know, hey, let's be realistic about this. Let's let's really try to, if we fail, fail fast. So you know that's that's kind of like my uh, but uh, again and build great products. So anyway, so we started this uh, business and we basically have been working with all these different clients that you know are from gaming, you know, the big pharma, um, you know, small startups as I was mentioning, you know, like uh, uh, you know you have your uh, allowance uh, kind of app with stuff like this, small startups that actually end up being successful. So and what it really gave us was this amazing insight in how difficult it is to you know to get eyeballs to and downloads to 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 apps and every single app that we ever work with is completely different everybody have a different business model everybody have a different monetization model so the approach is even though this here is kind of like an overall umbrella for what we do the approach is quite different so we're going to we're going to talk more about that but that's kind of like how we, you know, we got into the game, and um, and now, yeah, I guess you know we're we experts because we've been doing it for five years, you know, kind of since the, the the birth of ASO, I would say. So yeah, I guess that's actually a really good point. ASO or all these different techniques and <clears throat> new things that we're doing now, we're talking about now, only became a real thing what about four or five years ago. Right. I would say. We're talking about this before, and we're thinking, what in the history of the App Store actually changed? to get us to the point where we need to start thinking about how our keywords are and how our descriptions are and how our screenshots are. And we started thinking about what did change and the competition, obviously. In the beginning, there were a few apps, hundreds of apps. Now we're talking about millions of apps. And everyone has an app and everything has an app. But at the same time, also, it's the stores that are now since 2014-ish, 2013, 14, 15, have been trying to optimize what they show their users because it's not just a list of apps anymore. It's something that you need to download, you want to download. You have something in mind that you want to get as a user, and the App Store wants to help you. And in order for us to help the App Store to find our app, there are tricks and tips and techniques. Right. And that's really what ASO is, and that's really been happening only for the last four or five years. And we've gotten to the point where if you don't do it now, you're just not doing enough. Just building a good app has not been enough in, in a long time. And now, not actually trying to actively market it and promote it is also not doing enough. And that's been kind of the evolution of this. Um, you have a nice list here of things that. Yeah, yeah, we're, 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 have it's updated. interesting. We're, we're kind of trying to, uh, we're talking about what has happened in the app space. And I think there's, um, in the development of the App Store, you know, starting for, I, I even forgot the year, but you were saying like 14, 15, more. Yeah ish yeah more stuff was happening and you know the, the the developments of the app store really kind of started to step up their game with specific categories I kind of tried to category out um, we have the metadata chains in how you upload your metadata right this is to do with titles um, the description and so on and so forth then there is the visual component of your app store um, that has changed over time um, we've seen 
the introduction of more screenshots. We've seen introduction of videos, right? And um, latest, there's been uh, there now there's autoplay. In the in App Store, so you basically have a uh, you know small little way way of introducing your your concept in a in a short little way with, with a video. I don't know if, how many of you are making videos, but obviously like a very very important change in App Stores. Then we've seen a change to the the underlying data infrastructure, meaning the 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 platform when you go into iTunes Connect and when you look in the data in in your console, in your Google Play console, and the evolution, if you will, of those uh, data platforms have, you know, really uh, happened within the last, I would say, two years. Two, Some, yeah. Yeah, two, <clears throat> two, two, maybe three years. Two, maybe three years. Yeah. There, there's been, a, you know, we really, we can really dig in now and get a lot of really important data that we use for app, app store optimization. So um, that's that's definitely uh, one of, one of the big things that happened in, in the last three years. Then we had the introduction of experiments, which has to do with testing. A-B testing whether or not uh, one screenshot, for example, works better than, than another screenshot. I just want to do a quick count here. How many people are currently doing experiments in the App Store? Google Play. Google, in, sorry, uh, sorry, in Google Play. More than zero. That's, I think, good. It's better okay. than I expected. OK, wow. OK, cool. So let's just, OK, OK. I will say if you take one more thing home today, <laughs> You know, don't drink too many beers because this is really important. You, meet, you need to remember this. You have to set up A-B testing in your stores. If you're not testing right now on your apps, you're missing out on extremely valuable data. That's it. You need to be, you know, you need to set up tests. It's, it's called um, multi, multi variable testing. You have up to four different variations you can do in App Store. And you must always have a test running. If you don't, and this is per, per country. Always. So you can, you can run a US test. You can test out specific elements. You can test out your uh, screenshots. You can test out your feature image. You can test out your title versus subtitle, um, descriptions, and so on and so forth. I think as we get deeper into this, yeah. we'll have time to talk specifically Absolutely. about experimenting. But, but, but I was just a little shocked to my core <laughs> here. Because it, but, but, but you'll be surprised yeah. how many clients we see that don't do this. And this is one of the first things I say is like, <laughs> We, we begin there. Now, the, the algorithm, I'm not going to talk about the algorithm. It changes all the time. Personally, it's, I don't really care what happens because we use tools to, to figure out what are, what are the best um, you know, keywords. That's right. So, so, so basically, we don't really think too much. We are more, much more on the client side. We figure out how to use the tools. And then lastly, we have the introduction of paid, meaning uh, you know, specifically, how do we drive you know, paid acquisitions? So, you know, how do we, um, the new uh, search ads, for example, which is obviously a, a um, major change in the, in the Apple store. So, so that's, the, that's the, 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 the big things that happened in the last five years, the really important things. Um, so um, yeah, so let's let's uh... yeah, and those are all things that are really that's where, where where ASO really kind of wraps it all together, right? Right. So you can change your metadata, you can change other things, so you can rank better, and then change some more things so you can convert better, and then work with your app to understand how to get people to stay. All that will feed back into getting you more visibility. Yada yada yada. It's a self. That's right. So, um, so we talked a little bit about the history, and that's really why how we got to the point where now it's kind of a necessity. It's not just a thing that you can say, oh, I'm not going to worry about it for now. Maybe I'll worry about it later. Because you do want to get downloads, right? Everyone here wants to get downloads. So we'll, let's start by talking about rank. Right. What, does it, what does it mean to rank? What does it mean to be able to go into, um, into the App Store and search for a term that's associated with your app and see your app in the one, two, or three position? Um, how do we even get there? Where do we begin? And I think right. research is a great starting point. Because if you know what exists, you know what is currently working, you can take that and kind of uh, make that work for yourself. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so I think um, we're, we're trying to kind of map out a couple of tips, say, OK, what, how can you guys, how can we give you something very concrete to do when you walk home and you kind of, uh, you know, with all this chatter, it gets solidified, but what, what, what is it that, you know, very actionable stuff you need to do? So the first thing I'll say is, you know, research the competition. What is the competition out there? Has anyone here done, you know, research, competition research for, for the apps? 
we've seen it one. Okay, so that's good, right? So if most people know that, but can I see the hands again? Because we're looking at roughly. We're going to pick on you okay. in just a little bit. Pretty good. So we're looking like 70%, I would say, of the room understands that you know we need to take a look at their their, their co competitors. Now the the competition. Um, we can obviously look at a bunch of different things. We can look at their uh, screenshots. We can look at their, you know, uh, title. We can really go deep and, and analyze what are they doing on their on their pages. But another thing we can do is say, who are competition at the current moment, right? Because you need to have a some kind of, you know. Um, long-term plan and saying what what is our status as an app right now where or what level are we at i you know i get emails all day long from from app developers saying i would like to be in the top of the app store and i you know we have a filter for that so basically you know they they get deleted right away these emails and um if you're going to email him, you got to pick your words. Yeah, and don't Choose send me, don't send me an email from a Gmail address. Send it from a real business. <laughs> so, uh, but um, but basically, um, you know, you have to understand where you are at any given time in your like. You know, do you, do you want to rank number one? Well, maybe it can happen, but maybe it will take five years to reach there. So you got to pick your battles, right? So your competition is not Facebook, obviously, right? Unless someone, I mean, you probably wouldn't be here anyway. So, but it, it, maybe you if you, know. you, you never know, right? You never know. No, but 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 truly, your your face your competition is today is not Facebook. Your competition maybe in five years will be Facebook, but right now you need to figure out where who is your competition right now, right? So so when you be very you know look at your business and say okay, be realistic about where you are today when you make this com competition um, you know analysis, if you will. So I think it's um, you know we we talk about it a bit like there is a tendency for people to forget. Like there's, we have we've kind of exited out of the era of you know the dot com era of apps, right? People have realized that it's really really difficult to make good apps, so that that era is kind of over. But at the same time, there, it's still t important to remember that because you have an app doesn't naturally make it you know valuable to anyone, right? It's it's um, reality check. That's that's kind of what I, when you do the you know competition analysis, do a reality check on your own business. One interesting point <clears throat> about researching your, comp your competitors, when it comes to ranking on the App Store, if you're looking at your category rank, everyone in your category is probably going to be similar. But if you're looking at keyword ranks, the, the competitors can be competitors that are not really your day-to-day -day competitors. So they're not apps that are doing the same thing you're doing. They're just ranking for the keyword for some odd reason that maybe no one can explain. That's why games rank re really well for some utility keywords. No one really knows why. A lot of people have asked Apple. Apple hasn't really replied, same for Google. But at the same time, they're your competition. If you're trying to rank well, and it happens to us all the time. So we're an app analytics company, and we try to rank for app analytics in the App Store. We also ASO our own iOS app. And we don't compete against our direct competitors in the market. We compete against Google Analytics and, and Flurry, companies that we're not really in competition with. In most cases, we're actually working with to get more data. And so it's not just about you know your competitors, you don't really have to think about them too much. It's you don't know what you don't know, and you have to actually go in and make sure that you're targeting the right audience. The right audience, right. Yeah, exactly. I think you know, one, one, one thing that we, um, so our business, you know, we talk about it. So the, our entry level product for our business, we are a, an ASO business but we have uh, we act as digital you know strategists, meaning that we come in and we kind of take the forty thousand foot view on the business that we work with. So what we often do is we make workshop with uh, businesses to help them understand what it is that they're offering and what is their unique selling propositions. How many people here have a unique selling proposition mapped out for their app? There's one, two people here. Okay, cool. Three, four. four? That th this is a really important point, right? Because the you know your competition. If you really want to stick out in your competition, you know maybe you don't need to compete against a huge group of apps. Maybe instead, what you do is you switch your you know your offering slight little bit, and then you have you know the old school. I don't know if you know the ocean strategy, but like you find your little niche niche in the market, and you start out there, and then sh slowly you can switch over and you know expand your your offering later, 
when you kind of have your, your base up and running. So we, we do uh, workshops where we help uh, you know, the businesses, especially in corporate, try to understand you know, what, what is it their you know, customer segment looks like, how does it fit with, the, with the, their offering. And so I you know, will recommend that you guys take a really good look when you do the you know, competition, when you map out your competition, that you take a look at your business and figure out what is your value proposition. What is it that you are offering that is unique in the marketplace? Right? So you know, if you want to hear more about it you know, after this, I don't want to go too deep in this, but it definitely ties into the competition stuff. And it's extremely important that you really kind of have a, a good view of what, what it is that, you're, that makes your you know, app unique in the marketplace. And that's really all about <clears throat> marketing. And, and marketing is kind of similar across apps and non-apps. So you can tie that to a much larger strategy, things that people have been talking about for years. Um, but we'll talk. But that really drives the the conversion side of things, in my opinion, right, right, which right. we'll get to in, in right, just right. a little bit. So, um, so tip number one is really do your res your competitor research and try to understand who your competitors are, who you're competing with at all, and what it is that they're offering and how they're doing it. And then after that, you can start thinking about what do you change or what do you modify in your own app to get to the same results. Which takes my, uh, takes us to the next point, which is. Now that you understand kind of where you're going, how do you get there? Right, right. And, and step number one is, first of all, you want to rank. And to rank means that when someone searches for something that is relevant, relevant to your app, to your unique selling proposition, you want them to find you and not to be on page 18. Because no one will go to page 18. It's not even pages anymore. It's all swiping, but still. Right. Um, so yeah, good point. Yeah. So yeah, we, we mapped out uh, what we call some do's and don'ts, right? So there's uh, something you 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 definitely want to do, and there's some things you definitely don't want to do. So let me just um, pick up here, so we don't forget some of the important ones. But you know, the, if we talk about the don'ts first, because um, you know that's probably the stuff we typically see when we start working with clients. We, we are given access to iTunes Connect and we're given access to typically some keyword list. And um, what we often see is lack of intent based keywords, right? So uh, how many of you are familiar with uh, intent based keywords? At the SEO if, uh, anybody working in SEO knows exactly what that is about, right? Because this is so many years ago, right? I, I, I think I signed up for some, some like working for Google, checking their like getting like a side gig, uh, being like, uh, hey, you can help Google. And yeah, I went through some Google training basically, and they always talk about intent-based, um, you know, keywords, right? Uh, what is the person sitting there typing? What is the task that they're trying to get done? That's it. If you figure that out, when you see those like combination, a couple of words, then you have like that. That's your intent-based keywords. Okay, you know how to do this and this, right? Um, I want to, you know, buy a new bike or uh, whatever. You know, that's very intent-based, right? So we often see that people don't use intent-based keywords in ASO. And uh, another example I, I can give for, you know, specifically for corporate, they have a tendency to do stuff which is um, their vision of what they're doing. So very concrete example, a, an app, pharma app, uh, putting adherence um, and adherence, the word adherence, right? Uh, there's, there's a, a um, it, you know, it's a category of apps that had to do with making sure that people take their <laughs> pills, basically. And so in, in a drug adherence, program. They'll put that stuff in there. And, uh, and I'll be like, I think people are just going to write, you know, pill reminder. <laughs> Straight up, right? So stuff like that. that, that that's the example of where you have like this big gap in between what is the intent of a user and what is the, the, the offering of the company, what they think they're offering, right? So lack of intent-based keywords, uh, you know, uh, remember that. Then there's uh, the basic stuff. I'm just, you know, I'm going to go really fast through this because I don't think this is like uh, rocket science. Don't repeat your, you know, keywords in the title and in your 100 characters in the App Store. How many people are doing that right now? <laughs> I don't want to call anybody. Oh, shit. Okay, don't do that, right? So, but, um, and, and also on Google Play, are you repeating enough? What we like to do is, you know, you, when you do your analysis of your competitors, what you really want to do is you want to dive in and you want to look 
at um, the, the, the semantics, right? You, sorry, you want to look at the density, right? The keyword density for your keywords. And when you find your keywords, you look at the competitors and you analyze what is the density of their keywords. So you get like, okay, uh, what they really want to rank on is typically is around like three, four, five percent, right? Okay, they, they want to win that word. So how do we get there, right? Anybody working at SEO, you know this stuff, right? <laughs> right, this is like, this is, this is basic stuff. So there is a tie in, I don't like to do too much comparison with a, a, ASO and SEO, but there is definitely some overlap, there's definitely there's some overlap, overlap there, right? Yeah. It's so, not the same, though. It, 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 exactly, right? So there's there's certain things, but but um, definitely try to figure out how many repetitions you need in Google Play f to rank, and you know analyze and look at your competitors and figure out how much what's the keyword density on the keywords that they are trying to win, right? Uh, hard to spell words. I don't need to really re you know. You need to adhere to that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly, the adherence, right? Like <laughs> at at what? So. And then there's, there's something, and this ties again into this thing about being status quo. How broad are your keywords, right? Uh, do you use uh, branded keywords or do you use, um, you know, very broad, very narrow words, you know? Uh, again, this depends on where you are in your, you know, uh, in your business plan. You know, you're five years in and you have everything up and running and, you know, people using your apps, people loving your app. Are you going to start going broader with the keywords? So this is something we cannot really, you know, I cannot say go broad, go, there's no like rule for that because it depends on the client, right? Um, so, and um, lastly, high level keywords, um, you know, put them in a title, put them in a subtitle. That's, uh, um, that's in the don'ts. Sorry, they're oh, not, no. right? So they're not, yeah. if they're not in, right? Don't, so if, they're, if the high level keywords are not in the title, subtitle, or, the short description in your Google Play, then um, you know you you will probably have a problem ranking in that. So, so that's really what, what Apple and Google use to decide <clears throat> who you are and what your app does and what your app is that's worth. Right, that's right. And it works the same across the board, even for our app, an, an analytics app that not many people go out there and look for. Once we put it in the once we put analytics in the subtitle, we actually started ranking for everything that has to do with analytics. Right. I was just showing you before if you look for subscription analytics, for example, right now. On the App Store, we're number one, out of one, but we're number one. <laughs> out of one. And that's, <laughs> that's we, we created a category here. Yeah. Uh, but that's again just simply by putting it into the title, uh, into the subtitle in the App Store. Nothing really else. That's, so that's that's the amount of uh, increase you can see almost immediately by doing that correctly. Right. That's a good uh, segue into the do's. Yeah. So what should you do? Yeah, what should you do? So um, you know, let's let's uh, take the, the 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 thing we started with before in the don'ts, right? Use action-based keywords, right? Action stuff, intent-based stuff. Figure out what what are the people, and this is something again. I don't want to you know go too deep in the in the in the, in the this workshop thing with the value proposition, but when you map out what your customer segment are really trying to achieve on a daily basis, you know, and what it is that you are helping them with then you have your action-based keywords, right? The users trying to set a timer. They want to remember something, right? Yeah. So, you know, we, someone here had the, where, who had the timer app? Uh, you have the timer app, right? Like, do you, do you use, uh, I mean, you obviously, you're all the way in the sky with that app. So, so what, is, what is your keyword for, for, for specific, uh, some of the keywords, like the action-based stuff? Oh, um, I have like, Different keywords for a timer that people might use, like reminder or reminder, something right. like that. But then also like uh, use cases, so like kitchen, cooking, that kind of thing. Ah, right. And okay. That so makes a lot of sense. Yeah. They would use it. Exactly. So it's very yeah. task oriented, right? Yeah. 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 It fits. If you think about it, if you think about uh, something that a lot of people look for on the app store is weight loss, but people don't really look for weight loss. They look for lose weight, or they look for um, a step tracker. They don't look for tracking steps. So that's that's again going back to that. I know what I want, but it's what it's what I want to achieve. It's not just you know this phrase that I'm going to put into the search engine. And that's really the key here is you have to look at all those. Right. Yeah. So so um, then the the next point here is has to do with the combination, right? Start combining the words. Figure out all the different combinations. You for for iOS specifically, you only have a hundred characters. I will tell you end of the this show and before the Q and A, I'll tell you about a cool hack. 
Uh, maybe I shouldn't share it, but uh, maybe I will. Okay. Uh, there, there, will be a, there, will be a, there will be the secrets tips here. Tips and secrets. Yeah, tips and secrets. Fine. Tips and secrets. <laughs> we'll keep it to one. <laughs> so, uh, but, um, but use combination of, of the keywords, right? So you have different uh, type of keyword combinations. And, you know, when you use your tools to research whether what the volume versus, you know, competition in these keywords, you know, get a lot of different types of, of, um, of uh, keyword combinations going. So. Um, there's, there's something uh, here that has to do with the plural S. Um, you guys uh, might not know that the S is automatically placed there. If you if you say um, you know if you put a keyword in that can be spelled with an S and it, it becomes plural, um, you know the the end the algorithm will basically say yeah I get that, right? So now I've had a discussion recently with a client who says well. It does matter whether I put the S in, uh, and you know whether I do. Meaning that he wants to have both the word without the S and with the S in, because he actually sees there's a change in ranking. I just don't think that the the question becomes whether or not. Anyway, exper experiment with it, because Apple uh, will recognize that a word spelled without an S is can you know will be found as a search with S. Does that make sense? What, right. What's a good example for something like that, like yeah, car was, race versus car races, or? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to do. You know, my I'm blanking on like a, a specific <laughs> word right now. Maybe you guys have. Yeah, go ahead. Video, video, video. video videos, right? Exactly, right? There, there you go. So, so stuff like that. So, so in other words, you search for video, you will still be ranking for if you put videos in there, then you will still be ranking for video. So you should do it the other way around. Well, it depends. I think it, you should try both ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Save you a character. Try, yeah. try. Yeah, try. So, so experiment with that, but uh, you don't really need the the S in. Don't don't say you must have the one with and without the S. Try it out and experiment and see see how far you get. Okay. So, I'm gonna go back to this thing about a winnable keyword. Use keywords that you believe you can actually win. And what does winning mean? It means that you're not like you know, buried under 200 other apps. For a specific word, so, and how do you know that you can win it? Well, it depends on where you are in your, you know, business plan. So I'm going to go back to that and say, where are you now? Can what can you what can you win right now? If nobody will ever find your app, um, you know, uh, because you are using too broad keywords. Well, maybe it's time for you to to narrow down your keywords and go for a niche. You know, find your little niche uh, with the keywords and get something started. Right, so use keywords that you actually believe can you have a fair chance of winning on, or with. And uh, the last one I'm going to skip because I think we're going to come back to that with the with the engagement thing. Yep. Yeah. In just a little bit. Yeah, and we kind of we kind of touched on, on that mystery. Yeah, mystery. Cool. Um, yeah. So do you want to you want to yeah. open this one up here? I'll I'll jump into the next one. So. A lot of what I what I hear from people who are just experimenting with ASO or just trying it out and not entirely sure what it means is that they tried a few things, got a few keywords, put them in the right places, and got more impressions. And that's great. More impressions has a lot more potential, right? But um, it didn't really turn into anything meaningful. So their downloads didn't really go up by that much. Their impressions went up by thousands and thousands of uh, impressions, but the downloads kind of stayed static. And they were asked, they were basically saying ASO is stupid. No one needs ASO, it doesn't do anything, it's just a vanity metric. And that's just not true because it's missing that next component on our beautiful board over there, which is convert. So you get people to the app store or you get people to your app page, what do you do now? And now there are, again, a, a set of tactics that you need to employ to get people to see your app and understand what it does really quickly. Attention spans are, what, two, three seconds? If, if you get three <laughs> seconds, you're doing really well. <laughs> And so you need to get people to quickly understand what the app does, how does it tie back into that intent that they had, whether they're trying to lose weight or find an artist or anything like that. You want to get them to see it, to capture their attention, and that will turn into a download. And we're going to talk a little bit about what that means. Yeah, I think, I think uh, you know, just to, to talk about the how much time do you have, I think it depends on what the customer segment you're working with. If you're working within the gaming sector, I know that there's a, uh, you know, metric that is called time to first play. And that is the amount of seconds that you have to get someone into your app and playing the game. 
it has to be extremely short. If you don't have a, you know, uh, time to first play that is like, what is it like, if within like five <laughs> seconds or something? Short. Yeah, it's very short, Subway right? Very short. You know, people have left, right? Mm -hmm. It's a, your, 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 your app is a ghost town. So, so, so it, depend, it really depends. We have, we have a, a, a client um, where the demographic is 60 plus. And um, it's a very different, uh, you know, way of doing conversion optimization. Um, I was go as far to say that the conversion, uh, the experiments that we've set up show there's zero difference in how we set up the app store. We can put the, 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 the you know, the screenshots can be almost like completely random. The decision has been made elsewhere to download this app, and people, we, we've created these beautiful uh, screenshots, and it doesn't really make any difference, right? So, so it depends on your demographics. Now, is there best practices for conversion? Absolutely, yes. Uh, so in, in general, right, we can see that there is a, a good way of making, you know, good screenshots, right? There is uh, certain ways of, uh, of um, having high, con you know, there's, there is a methodology to getting high conversions. So let's talk about, for a little bit, about the, um, some of the really, really powerful ways, that, you know, very, very small changes that you can do to um, change the conversion rate in Google Play. And the reason I choose Google Play is because in Google Play, we can test it, right? It's very simple. We set up a test. This is, uh, you know, landing the store page A, and this is store page B. And we change one thing. So I'll give you a tip. Start with your feature image and start with your um, short description. Those two things are super easy to change. You change, you shorten it down a bit, the description, you know, make it a little bit more action oriented, you switch the, 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 the words around, and you'll see that conversion rate can change between, you know, it can go down too, but it can, it can jump like 10, 15, 20%. And I'm not kidding you with this. This is the conversion rates we see, okay, out there by changing a couple of words around like this, or introducing a new idea or a new concept, you change, now you, 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 then you've locked this down. You find, okay, cool, I got my 20% increase. Great, what's next? You go to the feature image. And why the feature image? That's the first thing people see in that store, right? You, you get into your page and that's on top. And you introduce a CTA, how many people are from the agency world? Call to action, right? A, a value proposition, your unique selling proposition, the first one, the best one, and you keep your copy less than six words, right? Don't write about all this stuff you can do. Just make it really actionable. Give them six words maximum. Three, if four if you can, great, right? But put it in writing there and some cool graphics there and try experimenting with that. Then you'll see that your conversion rate is probably gonna, you know, get another bump of like five, 10, 15%. And now we're looking at two different things here. We're looking at an object which is a you know short description, and we're looking at a feature image, and there are two you know it's all this stuff is it, you know it becomes uh, together right. You have 20% plus your new 15%, let's say. So suddenly you have a conversion increase of 35%, and this is not this is very very fast to do these these changes. You got to get a you know a graphic designer to do like you know 10 variations, talk it over, you know come up with some cool you know. Uh, uh, short descriptions, you know, you know, go think about your valid proposition, your unique selling proposition, all this kind of stuff. But, but basically, you know, get them done quickly and test it. And uh, depending on your volume, you'll see you typically need um, with with these. I mean, depends on. Uh, there's really no like a golden rule for how fast this goes. But if you have like let's say a couple of thousand downloads, you know, uh, five, ten thousand downloads, uh, you should be able to see pretty. Clear results. Probably um, not even. I think ten thousand yeah, is, even, is a nice number, even, but even a no, thousand. But even a thousand, we see the seed. Yeah. You know that you get that. It's, it's a good depends. starting point. Yeah, it's a good right. starting point. Minim, minimum a thousand. So so let it run, and uh, when you have a result, you have a result. You 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 say great. I I found my new uh, you know feature image. So and then you move through all these uh, different things that we talked about. We have screenshots. We have the descriptions. Uh, the long descriptions, I mean, that's kind of a different thing. I don't think you're going to 
we don't see a lot of stuff uh, happening when you change the description too much. It's There's something really tiny specific with ASO. It's only the beginning. It's like right. the first two sentences. You optimize the first two sentences. You put the right keywords in them that match the short description That's or the right. subtitle. Right. And on both stores, that helps. But everything below that is. <laughs> For users, you optimize it really for people, not that's, for the App Store anymore. That's, that's right. Uh, but, but you touch on a good point that what if it fails miserably? And what if you change a description and everything goes, goes really bad? How long do you usually give a test? Uh, do you look at the number of downloads? Or is there a point where you say, this is minus 40%? I, it's time well, to stop. actually, there's so so Google has a uh, it basically gives you an uh, I forgot what it's called, but basically it's like, okay, we're 90 percent accurate that the yeah. numbers we have now are correct. A so there, second, I think it's a p test. P test. That's statistics. what it's called. Okay, yeah, I so, believe so. so. They they will come up and they Someone will say, will correct me. Right, right. So they, they will come up and say, okay, we we, we got it now. We we're pretty sure with the amount of data we've collected, our algorithm tells us that you know you're. It's a safe bet to apply or not apply the test that you've been done. And it will be, it's very clear to see, it will be like a literally a little green arrow, something like so that. So you're OK with taking, continuing to seeing less downloads on a specific experiment as long as you're not at that point? Because I know when I run experiments, and I run a ton of experiments on our site mostly, is there's a point where I just I get this feeling that it's, it's not right. I have to end it. Yeah, I mean, what do you draw the line? No, what do you no, draw no, the line? We, we, I'm mostly we, we, curious. I, to be honest with you, some, typically what we, when we ended early, it's because it's just kind of not doing anything. Yeah. Like like this stuff I was just talking about with with uh, demographics 60 plus, nothing happening. I mean, just cancel and just yeah. leave it, you know, to your best and, judgment. You know? And I think that's very important because when we think about the idea of experiments, we kind of think about seeing them through. Especially if you created some assets and you spent the time or the money to actually do it, you want to see it through. But sometimes you just have to cut it. And you just have to say, this is definitely not working out, or it's not showing any sort of improvement, so I should, I should stop. And at that point, you should stop. Because um, ultimately, the goal of this is optimizing and improving. Not improving, not good. Don't be married to your creatives. Right, exactly. I, I just want to kind of show this. I mean, I think you can all see it here. This here is a test we did for a game. This here was the original, and these are three new icons. They were all minus, just around minus 50% conversion rates. Okay, bad idea, right? But hey, we figured out that's not the way to go. And this happened really fast. So, you know, don't see the, you know, the, the, the negative conversion as a failure, <laughs> you know? Because what you do is, Whenever you've done a test, that's our, you know, that's how we do it. We put it in a document, and we have a long list of all the tests that we do for companies, where we put in the hypothesis. Here's what we're kind of trying. Here's the idea, the concept. We put in the numbers. We take screenshots of the stuff that is happening within the, you know, um, uh, Google Play. Um, um, you know, within, within the platform. And then we uh, will write up a little kind of like short uh, conclusion of the result. And then down the line, people can say, well, we kind of tried this out, we kind of tried this out, and come up with new concepts, new ideas for what should be tested. But these here are important, right? Because now we figured out that this is a really bad idea and that won't happen again, right? <laughs> so, super important stuff. So, um, let's see, yeah, well, we talked about that. Yeah, yeah. I think we, 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 we I think it, it's, it, again, it's, it's important to remember. It's a cumulative, right? You do a test in your title. You do a test, and you, you test all these different elements. But together, it becomes a, a big change in conversion. And, and if I, and also, if I just kind of like talk about a little bit of best practice about screenshots, when you place your copy. If you, I don't know how often you browse an app store. I don't think anybody really browses the app store anymore, but that's the whole other thing, right? So, but if you decide to browse the app store and you like to look on a store page, you'll notice that the best place and the only place you should be placing, you know what, here's what you do. Just go and check what Google is doing, right? If Google is doing, look where they're placing their copy, their CTAs. If, Wherever they're placing it, that's where you want to place it. I can tell you where they're going to place it. They're going to place it on the first screenshot in the upper left corner. And the font will be large enough to read for people who would better, you know, with eyes that are not functioning well, right? So, and keep your copy short, right? So, okay, so that's, that's, uh, that's enough about conversion, I think. So let's uh, see what else we have. What, what is the next thing here? I don't know. I don't, want, I don't want to go, go too long before. So, so we don't make the into the QA. I think we okay. cover the conversion wow. uh, pretty well. I think 
ultimately, when it comes to conversion, a lot of it is, like you said, experimenting. Because what works for the 60 plus doesn't work for the 24 plus. And all you have to do is you have to make a change and then make sure that you keep track of what's going on. Right, right, and we right. talked a little bit before about a change that can seem like it is helping, maybe it's giving you more impressions, might be taken away from engagement. Or a change that is adding to engagement right. might be taken away from yep. your download. So all of that means that you have to look at the data and not just make a change and say, I'll come back in a week and maybe it'll be fine. Right. Um, make a change that fits what it is that you want to do. And you know you're at best. And if you don't, you can stop and think about it and you'll eventually know what your app does, right. uh, what it does best. But even if you don't, that's a good place to experiment. Yeah. If you're not sure what the intent of users as they come in, is there a particular use case for my timer? Maybe a kitchen timer, it works better than, uh, I don't know, where else do you use timers? Where else well, do people for, use timers? Work, yeah. Classroom, yeah, yeah. Timer. yeah. And, and you don't really know which one is the best, and that's a good place to experiment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should download this, uh, this timer app. In case you need a timer. What is it called? Timer Plus. Timer Plus. Oh, Timer Plus. OK, that makes sense. Cool. So, so I, I will add uh, one little thing here. So when what we've seen, this is really interesting. What we've seen is that when you um, start looking at conversion rates and you start changing um, stuff in your App Store page, sometimes what happens is that your conversion rates will drop a bit. Let's say you run an experiment and you're, you'll see that you get like, let's say, a minus 2, 3% uh, in your conversion rate. But maybe what you want to do is take a look at your engagement, right? So what we found is that we have clients where we do a change in the App Store page, we see a drop in conversion, but we see a 10% increase in engagement. And that is very important, right? Because really what you want is to have people engage in your app. I mean, all the stuff here, rank and convert, that's all good. But we all know. <laughs> it's a starting point. That's <laughs> how you get yeah. people into your app. That the really you know, important matrix here is like, you know, like engagement here is, is king, right? That's what we're all trying to build, like, you know, people that actually stay around for more than, you know, 730, whatever your, you know, retention, important retention number is, right? So some people in gaming, it's probably like a, what is that, a day one retention? Day, first hour retention? I don't even know what, but it's like, that's, that's like, so, you know, next level. And then you have, a, you know, the cooking apps. It's probably like, how often does, do they come back in the first, you know, week, two, three weeks, four weeks, right? So, but, but that's key, but so the conversion rate can, can actually um, drop, but engagement can go up. So when you have access to the data and get access to the data, look in your data and figure out whether or not you're seeing your engagement number change. So. Yeah, experiment, experiment, experiment. That's right. Really, that's what it is. Um, we're running really low on time. I think we're like 10 minutes past. Oh, shit. <laughs> but you're all still here, so that's good. <laughs> Um, you're still engaged, so let's talk about engagement quickly. Whew. Yeah, well, um, how to optimize your, you know, retention rate? Wow. Um, let's see here. So, so what do we do? I mean, I think it, so. Engagement. It's it's such an expansion field. So, how many people here are tracking? engagement rate on a daily basis. Okay. Okay. How many people have an app where you actually it, that is launched and active and so on and so forth? We, everybody? Okay. So, okay. All right. So, I'll look at you guys. So, f for you, only I see two of you that are tracking engagement rates. What does that mean? Like looking? Every day? Yeah, looking at your retention for like 7 day, 30 day, you know, retention. <laughs> okay. No, no, but but okay, but but you you do you do. You're take familiar a look with at the concept, and you're like, right. yeah. So, how important is it to your business? You're very welcome to, to answer. <laughs> so, who, does anybody want to talk about the, how important it is to your business? Like, how what what do you feel? I have an ad support of that, so if they're engaged, we're using the app. That's why. Right. That's what I make money. So. It would be the same for a freemium app. It would be the same for anything that has this sort of, uh, I can pay you more, or I can make you more money in, in one way or another because I'm in the app. 
or also not drop off and go to the competitor. But right. also it helps your ranks That's because right. the more people stay in the app, the more you get to rank, the more you get to convert, and then you get to engage them again. That's right. That's so right. so it's, it's tied into the ASO. So now what we, so we, we've been, you know, as I was saying, in the game for five years. And I remember sitting at a, um, we did a uh, analysis of a portfolio of apps for, for corporate business. And uh, what we did is we, um, we mapped out um, the number of downloads for, for each app within the portfolio. So, you know, this guy, X amount of downloads, blah, blah, blah. And then we, we you know, took out all the engagement numbers. We took out the 30-day, I think, engagement numbers. And we uh, put, you know, the, the big circle, that was a download, and the little circle here was the engagement. Right. How many, we had a million downloads, and you have currently, um, 3,000 active users, right? And we, we mapped out the whole portfolio and we showed it to the C-level guys that were, had spent you know, piles of money building this whole portfolio of apps. And they were sitting there looking at it and I remember thinking to myself, holy shit, you know, whoops. But um, I think it, they realized that, um, that downloads means nothing, right? And I think in general, we were talking about it the other day, I think there is a change in the industry which is great because people are starting to ask really hard questions, right? The hedge funds that are dropping the money, the pension funds or whoever is representing them saying, hey, what's happening here, right? Enough is enough. You know, a lot of money is being thrown at these apps. What, what, are we making money? What's our ROI on, on investment, right? So there's, there's, there's a new wave coming where people are gonna ask real hard questions and also it's extremely difficult to, to make great apps. But, but I think this is, when, 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 even when, when I saw these numbers, this is like five years ago, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And this, this, this we've, been, we've been seeing over the last five years in, with many businesses that they are patting themselves on the back in corporate C-level you know, suites because they have millions of downloads. But when people take a look, which nobody does, on their engagement numbers, yeah, you know, again, this is, you are, you are free, a uh, free man because you're in the game world and you guys have been looking at engagement numbers from day one, but, but all the other cats right out there are basically, you know, just ignoring their engagement, you know, retention rates. And this is a super crucial part to really, if you want success, you know, do these things right, you know, get your ranking, convert, but think really, really hard about, and I know it, I mean, this is basically a whole nother talk. And multiple talks. We and can multiple talk about talks, this for right, a few right. more so, hours. So, but, 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 it, but it ties in today even more because, because the algorithms are now tuned to look at your engagement rate, right? So if you don't have, if you are a ghost town, if your app is, in, is a ghost town, well, chances are you probably not rank very high, even if you work really, really hard to do all these things we've been talking about, right? So, but that's... Let's uh, take that. Uh, we'll be back here tomorrow at 7 yeah. and we'll... we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 7 a.m. sharp, there'll be bagels. <laughs> so, cool. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we should, uh, you know... Maybe... I think this is a great time, yeah. I think, to, to stop and take questions. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, do you know if Apple ever just, like, kind of skews the rankings for someone? I, I saw a new... <laughs> Microsoft app and it just rocketed to the top and all the other apps are really old. That's curious how they did that. I don't know. That's I, yeah, I wouldn't know. Uh, that's a good question. We look at data a lot of times and we look at the downloads associated with these huge kind of spikes. Um, and for those who didn't hear, the question is, does Apple mess around with the ranks to help their friends? I don't know if Apple and Microsoft are that great of friends that they'll do that. <laughs> Uh, but while Apple doesn't do that, it's, it's Microsoft who's doing that. They're buying a lot of ads and they're making sure that on day one, they're going to hit the store and they're going to hit it hard and everyone is going to know about them. And that really propels it up the ranks. Something you can do not as well with Google because Google is a lot slower to change the ranks. And so you'll see these big companies just buying a ton of ads for about a week. 
and just bursting all the way to the top. And then if the app is sticky enough, if it's useful, if everything about it converts well, uh, then it will probably stay there. It will drop a little bit. There was an app that we did a blog post about, I think, last week or two weeks ago called House or Honey, not House. And Honey is a, an app to help with coupons. I think it aggregates coupons. I've never used it, but it seems really interesting. And in one day, they made it to the top three in the US on Friday two weeks ago. Uh, and then they immediately dropped. And that's because they have a humongous mailing list. And they emailed everyone and said, download the app. So I think that's really how those happen, as opposed to you know Apple. Is that keyword search ranking? Absolutely. Yeah. It's all tied together, because it's all based on your performance, a number of downloads, a number of ratings. Right. And, and following up on that, so, so we actually we helped the client. Uh, what we did is we, we looked at the ranking um, and the download volumes uh, within a certain category for a client. And we calculated approximately what uh, amount of downloads they needed to be number one in a specific category. And uh, by looking, they had a huge mailing list. So um, normally when they were blasting out um, mailers about you know pushing the app, they would do it in one shot, right? And so what you would see is that they would hit the, the number one in the app store within their category in a very short time. So basically what we, we, we did some quick calculation, we figured out if they just um, were seeding out or like sending smaller, um, you know, uh, batches. Yeah, batches, if you will, of, um, of emails out. Suddenly they could ride out uh, for maybe like three weeks. Uh, they had enough uh, emails to be on the top of the category for three weeks. So, so that's, a, that's definitely some a way you can, you know, put a little effort into the strategy about how you, you, you push your app. Go ahead. Because uh, Apple doesn't have great experimentation tools like Google Play does, do you guys have any recommendations on sort of how to best test metadata like screenshots and description? Do you let it run for two weeks and then switch it out two weeks later on your next release, or if, how, how how can we do that now? Yeah, it's 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 a it's a tough thing. So we 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 talked about it just an hour ago specifically. There there are actually tools out there that you can use. The problem with these tools are what they typically do is they make a a, um, a clone, if you will, of the of the of the App Store experience, and so you you know you you collect your data based on uh, on a very limited influx, uh, like a very slim funnel, um, because you how do you get people there? You're not looking at organic, right? You're looking at the people that you're driving to that experience, like through an email list, for example, but uh, that's one way of, of checking. You can you can use these kind of tools, and they're, they're you know depending on your. It's it's probably not uh, for the early guy app guys. It's for the guys that have a little bit more volume. They're quite expensive these tools, but um, but another way of doing it is simply by looking in data, and we do that. So we would uh, go in, we'll analyze the data, and we you can you can calculate your way out of it and say, oh, this here is organic and. The, the data is there. You just need to dig in. It, it yeah. takes you longer to find the answers, basically. And, and it can be the data that you do. So you swap your you swap your keywords. You swap a whole bunch of stuff. Or you can look at competitors at the same time, especially direct competitors for something like that. So if you see their keywords and you see their description and you see they're making a change, you can piggyback off of that. So you can do both. Um, following up on that, how many things should you change per? For experiment? Yeah. Uh, that's a really tough question. That's a good question for A-B testing in general. Yeah. yeah. What, is, what is your take yeah. on yeah. this? What's the minimum amount of time you should, you should test it? Uh, well, well, you should test it until you have a, an answer. <laughs> and that depends a on the volume. A conclusive answer. With, you, with your apps, like you, you, because you're already up there, you probably have answers in like a couple of days. You know, Sometimes even hours, you'll see results. So, but uh, wh how, how many things? I would say, so, because you have a, a, a lot of volume, you can really dive in and be like, I'm going to test subtitle, just that. So when you, when you set up your experiment, you click check off. I, I want to check the subtitle, and that's what you change. Everything else stays the same. Right. And you, or I want to change the screenshot. Right? Well, so that's for conversion. How about if you're trying to rank higher on a certain search term? Oh, stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, got it, got it, got it. OK, that's a, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. I mean, but, but in general, I think that would kind of be the same. Usually when we run experiments uh, specifically for keywords, we'll try to find three or four more keywords that we want to try. 
that we want to try out, I should say, mm -hmm. and then go full force. So title, subtitle, app name, description, uh, and even screenshots if we want to do that. Because it's really about the keyword. It's not about the actual asset that's being changed. And they all play together. Uh, uh, I, will, I will just add that uh, in iOS, immediate effect. It changes iOS 12, immediate effect. Yeah. yeah. iOS pre-12 uh, is like two to three weeks. We, we saw immediate effect on, on the early Even versions. 11 and 10. Yeah, yeah. iOS was, was really fast. I, I, Google Play, it's almost like it seats in, like, yeah, in, Google it, really yeah it's, it's, it's slow, like, it, it feels, uh, it's a different, so the stores have very different dynamics in that regard. Go ahead. Um, so since, like, iOS actually doesn't have formalized experiments and Google Play does, how transferable are some of the learnings from Google Play experiments to iOS? In particular, I know most of our app downloads come through search, the search res the visual design search results in iOS and Android are very different. Um, on iOS, you know, there is no feature graphic, there is no short description. Screenshots are in search on Google Play. Uh, screenshots are not in search. So, and, and even on the product page, I think screenshots are a little bit further down on, on, on Android. So, if screenshots do well on Android, I don't. I, I my intuition is that you know that may be unrelated to what I see on iOS, just because they're different experiences, different user bases. Do you have any kind of recommendations? Or uh, yeah, I mean, uh, basically, you know, we were kind of alluding to it before. You can, you can, you can test out. You can try stuff out in iOS, but the way you get the results is manually done by looking in the data. <laughs> so it's like it just so you you can you basically test uh, you know again get your you know set up your strategy and your do your raw test over on on the Google Play side at least if you're just getting started just start with you know doing it in Google Play and then transfer them over and go through the data and see if it really works or if it doesn't you know it just takes a while to 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 read uh, to read out from from the data. And to follow up on that quickly, I think there isn't a lot of transferability just because not even the search results, but the page itself is so much different. So ultimately, the users have a very similar intent if they're getting to the same place. But uh, they go about in such a different way that, like you said, uh, screenshots are not even that apparent on Android, but they are kind of front and center on, on iOS. So it really goes back, in my opinion, to the unique selling proposition. If you know what it is, then you can use the medium to really drive that forward. So on iOS, it would be a screenshots. And you would want to have that in that first screenshot and in your video if you have that. But on Android, you want to have that in that short description or in something else. So that's, that's how I would look at it, kind of zoom out and do that instead. Uh, to video or not to video? Uh, so that, that's an interesting point. I mean, if you are a game developer, you video. And uh, if you are a, um, depends on the app. Uh, we've we've seen drops uh, in conversion rates with uh, videos, especially long videos. They are uh, and if they're they, like a lot of um, in the beginning, uh, when when they just launched the feature, we saw people were trying to show you know everything in the app, um, you know, and people were just overwhelmed and conversion rates were, were dropping. Now, what we find is that if you want to um, do video. We uh, try to take a little different approach. We say, OK, how do we introduce in the video um, a, the first thing, the first action that we want the user to do inside that? And so it ties into almost like it becomes like an onboarding, uh, uh, part of the onboarding process, right? So this way, you introduce a, a, a specific action, and you introduce the UX in that video Right? So when the user comes in, it's not, oh, OK, I, I, I feel home now. I feel at home suddenly. And there's that one thing that you push, maybe your unique selling proposition, but also the first thing you want them to do in the app to have that wow experience or whatever push them to the, into a funnel. Right? So, so instead of having multiple videos, it all depends on the, on the, on the you know, app, but we find uh, you know, that it really makes sense to make very, very short videos, really target on specific action you want them to do. It's a, so I think the answer is always yes, but how when it comes to video? And you've got to do it right. So I would like to ask you a question. One of them is like, really quickly, like, do you have any like, tips and tricks to get the future? <laughs> we have a guide on that, actually. <laughs> he, um, he made the guide. Second question. I'll give you a link later. Okay. So, uh, 
I like the black hat, by the way. So what are you guys <laughs> thinking about like black hat teams in this? <laughs> I think that's an off-camera question. <laughs> that's for later. <laughs> black, black hat stuff. I wrote an article many years about the black hat stuff. I'm basically, I think the conclusion is something in the ballpark of uh, like, don't do it. You know, don't yeah, do it. Yeah. That's it. It doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. No. The yeah. thing is, the, the upside is really small, and the chances of that actually working are really small, and the chances of it failing miserably are humongous, and you're getting either kicked off the store, or something terrible for your app that is is going to be really hard to bounce back from are really high. So is it worth it? Not really, in my opinion. What about feature? Yeah. Getting featured? Uh, getting featured is definitely worth it, and you should definitely give it a try. Tips and tricks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a whole other topic. I can talk to you after oh, that. Sure. But you, you'll yeah. see, I mean, I look at this, some of the apps that we, you know, that we work on that have been featured. It's like, I mean, it's a that's, spike in a shift. That, that's uh, if, you, if you, you know, read, read the, you know, he, he has the, the, the magic sauce. So, you know, <laughs> you're hooked up. <laughs> that's one of the secrets of today's talk. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead. Um, actually, I was going to ask about localization, how important it is. So I guess that kind of ties to your secret thing there. Like, how <laughs> important is it to localize your screenshots, your video, and your description, and all that? And yeah. Also, the app and making it like a good experience. Well, it depends on your business. I mean, it really depends. <coughs> if if it if it's if your business model uh, it requires you to be in Germany, you must have a localized everything, right? right? And so. Often what we do is we, um, we typically, when you, we work with clients, we ask, what are your key markets? Because when you start out, it's not necessary. I mean, unless you're like Coca-Cola, that's a whole different game. But, but um, you know, we typically say, what are the most three most important markets? And then you focus on those to begin with. Uh, and. Um, it's um, it depends on your, on your business. I mean, you know, I would have to ask a lot of questions. And if, if Germany and and UK, you know, we have we have people that say, you know, we really just want to win Italy. We was trying to start this uh, very specific app. We just, you know, I, we have clients that are targeting um, specific cities, right? They're saying we just want to start, you know, Washington and this, and you know, this is so. It all depends on, on your business, really. But uh, localization, does it work? Absolutely. Is it crucial if you're in the German market? Yeah, it is. Well, think about it this way. If your keyword is in German, then if you have English uh, optimizations, it's not going to work. Right. So uh, I think it's, like, like you said, uh, if you need to be in that market and you really want to win that market, you have to optimize. Right. Um, I was wondering for iOS. You're next. I'm sorry. Um, Apple redesigned the app store a few years ago to yep. be more focused on featured apps. Um, I was wondering how much that impacted like, small developers or apps that have a feature, like how much it slightly the advantage. There was a whole shift in number of downloads. That was actually a humongous thing, I think, for developers because before that, the app store was a big catalog of things. And the featuring was still nice, but there weren't that many of them. It wasn't as curated as it is now. And then after we saw that, or after that happened, we saw just a shift in general, um, an upward trend in downloads consistently. So people are coming into the App Store. Maybe they're coming to find an app. Maybe they found it, and they're going to go away. But maybe they're also looking around, because there might be something else that they need. And what Apple is doing with the curation, the Today page, the uh, App of the Day, Game of the Day, a lot of that is actually getting a ton of traction. I mean, would you advise to be more focused on trying to get featured rather than like giving Frank higher search? Right? Yes and no and maybe. I think it's a, it's a good strategy to say, I want to be featured. But the steps that you need, and what you'll find in my guide, which I will give you later, is that the, the elements that you can optimize for are actually very similar. So there's a ton of overlap, especially on the Apple side of things, between getting featured on the App Store. Obviously, you need to do a few extra things but um, and, getting, and optimizing for that conversion. So if, if you do both and you're really able to see your unique value proposition through, it will help you on both sides. So I would say aim for both. If all you want to do is get featured, you can do that all on its own. And if all you want to do is just want to get more impressions, you can do that on its own. But because they're so similar in the actual techniques, I think you can do both. You mentioned that ASO would affect engagement. How would it affect engagement in the app if someone has already downloaded it and gets away from the store? Is that what you mentioned? Well, well excuse me, can you ask that again? So, so for what I got from it is that you said that ASO would affect engagement, so retention. 
Well, I mean, if you look at it from, if, if, if people, if you, let's, let's, let me give you a concrete example. You have an app and you use something which is far away from what you're actually offering you, as keywords. People because it's easy and, and you can rank really people, well. People, you know, you, you, you get a lot of uh, eyeballs, you get a lot of uh, downloads uh, in for some reason, and people end up in your app and it's not actually fulfilling or helping with the task that they were hoping uh, to, to, to get done in their life then you're going to see your engagement numbers low, right? I mean, I think it would maybe something like that also, too. So. Well, the idea is that the people that come to your app and what, we, what you just said about that kind of first experience that you want to drive people towards being right. in that video, um, that's, those are the kind of tools that you can use to, once you get people on board to get them to use it. Because if someone has an idea in mind, they have an intent in mind, they want to get something accomplished, it happens to me all the time. I want to do something, I find an app, it looks great on the App Store, and then I download it, and nothing makes any sense. The buttons are not exactly what I expect. That, that onboarding experience is not as smooth, and I just drop off. And because everything is free these days, everything is either freemium uh, or subscriptions or ad-based, it's so easy for me to just drop it and go and find another one. And so if you lead the right people, the right user into the app, you can probably expect them to stay and engage with the app. And that's what you want because then again, that goes back to the beginning.